finally ditched that console and decided to join the PC Master Race. The one caveat is, you're broke. This is your way in. Welcome back to Tech215. I'm your host, Nick, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look back at one of my favorite budget graphics cards, the Asus Rogue Strix RX 570 4GB model. This card first debuted in April of 2017. It was meant to be a direct competitor of the NVIDIA GTX 1063 and 6GB model. At one point, we had great competition from Team Green and Team Red. But something really unique happened in late 2017 as the GPU mining craze hit its peak and forced prices for GPUs to nearly triple in price. About a year ago, the GPU mining bubble finally burst, leaving miners with a slew of cards that could no longer produce them money. eBay was immediately flooded with RX 570s, 580s, and 590s, leaving the consumer with a ton of options at the lower tier price. But now in early 2020, RX 570s and 580s can easily be found on eBay for between $60 and $120, totally opening the floodgates for people trying Trying to get into PC gaming on the cheap. With all that being said, I wanted to take a look back at the RX 570 and see if it was still viable for AAA gaming in early 2020. We're going to run this up against the GTX 1660 and at the end of the video come up with a price for a frame to see what the better buy is for your next ultra budget build. But before we do that, let's take a quick peek under the hood to see what the RX 570 is rocking. The RX 570 has been without a doubt one of AMD's most popular budget cards in their history. It's based on the second generation Polaris architecture, but it's only 10% faster than its predecessor, the RX 470, which debuted a little less than a year earlier. The RX 570 4GB debuted in April of 2017 with a budget-friendly MSRP of $179.99. At its core, it features a 1300 MHz base clock speed and a 1750 MHz memory clock speed. It also features 32 ROPs with 128 texture mapping units and 2048 shaders, all connecting using a 256-bit memory interface. The card also supports DX12, as well as the very popular Vulkan API. The much improved Radeon Adrenaline drivers come equipped with FreeSync 2, AMD's Chill, and to rival NVIDIA's GeForce Experience, AMD's Relive Capture is a great way for gamers who want to capture video and screenshots but don't have a dedicated capture card. On our test bench today, we have the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, 16GB of G-Skills Trident Z RGB 3000MHz RAM, the Corsair MP510 NVMe SSD, and it's all sitting on the Aorus B450M motherboard. So now, let's take a look at the benchmarks. All games were tested at 1080p high settings using the DirectX 11 API, and both cards were set to stock settings. So our first benchmark of the days of course unage in heaven, where the RX 570 had an impressive showing, scored an average FPS of 102 and a score of 2576, while the newer Turing-based card held a 20% margin of victory, racking up 125 average FPS and a score of 3162 in this very popular benchmark. First up, we have Battlefield 5. The RX 570 had an average of 76 FPS across three stages of the game, while the GTX 1660 had an average of 81, only a 6% increase over Team Red. But the RX 570 was smooth across all three levels tested in single player mode. Quite an impressive feat for a very graphically intensive game from EA. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is up next, and the respawn title from EA averaged 62 FPS and did have some slowdowns at times, while the GTX 1660 remained smooth as butter over the entirety of its run. Although AMD's adrenaline drivers have seen vast improvements since the RX 570's release, it's a newer title thus far more demanding on the GPU. Still a decent showing from the almost 3 year old card, but the 1660 won this battle by 25%. Apex Legends showed the RX 570's age on this one, as the 4GB of VRAM was an obvious limiter for this title. Averaging only 57 FPS, you might be better served to turn the settings down to medium here for far better frame rates. The 1660 with its 6 gigs of VRAM handled Apex with ease and averaged 94 FPS, giving it a commanding 49% victory. But again, dropping the details down a notch would certainly put this title over the 60 FPS mark 
for the Radeon GPU. Buttery smooth FPS as the RX 570 had a very impressive showing with Fortnite, averaging 71 FPS on epic settings. The GTX 1660 performed only 21% better, while racking up 88 average FPS. And that is to be expected with a much newer die and two extra gigs of VRAM. AMD has done a fabulous job optimizing its drivers for Fortnite as the game was smooth and consistent through its entire run. So now let's take a look at the price per frame comparison at $71 on the used market. Here is a list of each game broken down and an average of all four combined. With the exception of Fortnite, these are fairly newer titles and the RX 570 still performed great given its price tag. You can expect the RX 570 to play most recent AAA titles at or above 60 FPS at high details, but will certainly meet and exceed that in esports titles like CSGO, Rocket League, and as seen in this video, Fortnite. Alright guys, that has been a look back at the Radeon RX 570 4GB model. I think this is one of the best values in GPUs on the used market right now. Where else can you find a card that plays the latest and greatest AAA titles? At 60 FPS on medium to high settings, there really is no other card on the used market right now. Get into some of the negatives and the positives about this card. First up, the positives. As I said earlier, it's just such an absolute great value, and I guarantee you at 71 bucks, you're not gonna find a better deal. Let's look at some of the negatives that come along with this card. And the first is obviously most of the cards on eBay right now are former mining cards, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Most miners undervolted their cards, but also kept them in neat, clean spaces so that the cards would last a lot longer and have longer uptime. One of these cards, you may have to flash the BIOS back. You can find all these BIOS at Tech Power Up. I will put a link in the description down below. The last thing you're gonna wanna do when buying one of these cards is to clean the card out, take the card apart, and also clean off the thermal paste. Remember guys, these cards are almost three years old at this point and you are gonna wanna change the thermal paste. I guarantee by doing this, you guys will get the most out of the card and also the card will last a lot longer. But that about does it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned. I have a brand new video coming next week. It's gonna be episode two of Ultra Budget Builds and I am so psyched to show you guys what I've come up with this month. Thanks for watching. Peace.